China just slammed the door on ASML and TSMC for good. No warning, no delays, just a hard cutoff that stunned the West. But this wasn't a tantrum, it was a declaration. Beijing isn't just ditching foreign chips, it's rewriting the entire semiconductor order. Your phone, your car, your economy, all of it is now tangled in China's silicon uprising. But why would China kill the very companies it once depended on? And did Washington just force the one move it never saw coming? Stick around, because what's brewing next could rewrite the rules of global power. On January 18, 2025, Beijing halted all future purchases and technical cooperation with ASML and TSMC, just 72 hours after the Dutch government canceled licenses for ASML's DUV exports to China. This wasn't a retaliatory tweet. It was a systemic shutdown. China imported $2.6 billion worth of lithography systems from ASML in 2023 alone, according to Chinese customs data. But when the Netherlands revoked service support for previously shipped machines under U.S. pressure, effectively bricking $15 billion in Chinese chip infrastructure, Beijing concluded that relying on foreign suppliers was no longer a risk. It was a liability. According to tech strategist Dan Wang at Gavakal Dragonomics, this move isn't sudden. China has been waiting for the moment Western supply chains became more of a threat than a benefit. But cutting ASML and TSMC doesn't just burn a bridge, it forces China to pave its own. And fast. So how did the very sanctions meant to contain China end up pushing it to the edge of a chip revolution? The 2022 U.S. sanctions were designed to paralyze China's semiconductor ambitions by blocking access to advanced chip-making tools, AI accelerators, and foreign talent. Instead, they ignited an investment spree. Between 2022 and 2024, China funneled over $75 billion into its domestic chip sector through state-backed funds, according to Bloomberg and NEF. Imports of semiconductor manufacturing equipment surged 33.8% year-over-year in 2024, despite export bans. The goal wasn't immediate self-sufficiency, it was rapid insulation. Sanctions accelerated a 10-year plan into a three-year sprint, says Paul Triolo, head of tech policy at Albright Stonebridge Group. China also fast-tracked over 50,000 engineers into its chip ecosystem, many recruited from ex-Huawei and ex-Tsinghua Unigroup Labs. The result? A fragmented but fast-adapting chip sector that's now closing the gap not in a decade, but potentially by 2026. But how do you build the future when you're banned from the present's best tools? ASML's EUV machines are $200 million marvels that use light 13.5 nanometers wide to etch impossibly small circuits. China can't legally import them, and likely won't for years. So it's doing the unthinkable. Skipping them. In March 2025, Shenzhen-based SciCarrier claimed its new lithography tools can support sub-7 nanometer manufacturing using a proprietary DUV-based process. Independent validation is still underway, but Huawei's September 2023 Mate 60 Pro already shocked analysts by running a 7 nanometer chip made entirely with pre-banned tools. According to Tech Insights, SMIC achieved this by deploying triple patterning DUV processes once thought unscalable. They're brute-forcing Moore's Law, says Dylan Patel of Semi-Analysis. It's inefficient, power-hungry, and expensive, but it works. China may not need EUV to get to 5 nanometers. And the 3 nanometer barrier? Let's just say Huawei's Kirin Lab hasn't gone quiet. But adapting old tools isn't enough. You still need someone bold enough to push them to the edge. When Huawei's Mate 60 Pro dropped in August 2023, it wasn't the phone that made headlines, it was the chip inside. A 7 nanometer Kirin 9000s, made by SMIC, with zero foreign support. The teardown confirmed that SMIC used FinFET architecture, and a DUV-only process, to make what many assumed was impossible. Huawei followed with a December 2024 prototype, powered by a 5 nanometer class chip, reportedly using quad patterning and proprietary AI assisted yield tuning. Smike hasn't commented officially, but sources speaking to Nikki Asia said they were producing experimental runs of near 3 nanometer class chips by early 2025. 
It's not scalable yet, defect rates are high, and yields are low. But it proves that with enough capital, software, and pressure, China can squeeze old tools into doing new tricks. And when your tech ecosystem is under siege, breakthroughs don't come from comfort. They come from desperation. But what happens when desperation becomes doctrine? So, what does China gain by slamming the door on Western chip giants? Short-term loss, long-term dominance. By freezing out ASML and TSMC, Beijing is betting that the pain of immediate isolation is outweighed by the freedom of future sovereignty. In 2023, over 85% of China's high-performance chips were imported or manufactured externally. But by late 2024, that figure dropped below 60% according to data from the China Semiconductor Industry Association. Cutting off ASML eliminates repair dependency. Cutting off TSMC removes vulnerability to geopolitical pressure. More importantly, it signals to domestic firms, no more crutches. The message from Beijing is clear, says George Yeo, former Singapore foreign minister and current chip strategist. If the West turns off the lights, we'll build our own electricity. In doing so, China gains full control over its military systems, AI infrastructure, and industrial upgrades without back doors, delays, or diplomatic strings. But can an ecosystem built under pressure actually compete in a global market? If this were a poker game, China just called the West Bluff with a straight flush made from recycled scrap. In 2020, China couldn't make a 14 nanometer chip without importing core IP. By the first quarter of 2025, it had already produced over 2.3 million 7 nanometer class chips, some found inside Huawei's Mate 60 Pro using repurposed DUV machines and AI enhanced lithography, according to Tech Insights. What began as damage control became disruption. SMIC's domestic market share jumped from 5% in 2020 to 19.3% in 2024, according to Bloomberg NEF. And that's not just survival, it's strategy. As China builds its own vertically integrated ecosystem, global suppliers are feeling the recoil. Dutch ASML saw its China-bound revenues drop 27% year-on-year in the fourth quarter of 2024. The tech economy isn't shifting. It's being reprogrammed. But if China's rewriting the code, who's getting a race next? We're not heading into a tech cold war. We're already three acts in. In December 2024, Washington blocked NVIDIA from shipping its latest AI chip, the H20, to any entity linked to China's military civil fusion policy. Beijing answered by suspending exports of graphite and gallium, two elements the U.S. defense sector can't function without. According to Reuters, this caused a 16% price spike in advanced radar systems and EV batteries within 60 days. And just like that, the battlefield spread from fabs to factories. Academic blacklists followed. Over 410 Chinese researchers were recalled from U.S. institutions in the first two months of 2025, per the South China Morning Post. Every sanction sparks a mirror move. Every restriction births a workaround. And while no missiles have flown, the damage is very real. The tech is just the weapon. The war? It's everything underneath it. But what happens when both sides stop aiming at each other and start aiming at the markets? That's when every wire, every screen, every satellite runs through Beijing's blueprint. By late 2024, China had filed over 21,000 semiconductor patents a 34% increase year-on-year, year, according to the China National IP Administration. This is volume and its vertical control. Huawei designs, Smike fabricates, Changshin memory seals the deal. And if China hits its 70% self-sufficiency goal by 2028, a target reaffirmed in Premier Li Chang's National People's Congress speech in March, U.S. firms could find themselves locked out of a $1.2 trillion global market unless they play by China's tech stack. Think of it like Android and iOS, except one controls drones, satellites, and 5G grids across Asia, Africa, and Latin America. This isn't just a supply chain shift, says Chris Miller, author of Chip War. It's a realignment of global power. But if China's building an empire in Silicon, what's happening to the consumer kingdom back home?
Let's talk numbers. In February 2025, the U.S. Trade Office estimated that escalating tariffs on China-made components would raise smartphone prices by up to 41% over the next 18 months. An iPhone 16 Pro Max? That could hit $2,300 retail if Apple's Chinese parts pipeline dries up, according to Barclays Supply Chain Analysis. Now zoom in, because your smart thermostat, your EV, your smartwatch, all of it relies on chips touched by either side of this war. And privacy? That's not a theoretical debate anymore. U.S. manufactured chips are beholden to the Cloud Act. Chinese-made alternatives feed into Beijing's cybersecurity law. Where your data goes depends entirely on where your device was built. Consumers won't just choose brands, says Alex Capri of the Henrik Foundation. They'll choose surveillance systems. And if you're thinking, well, I'll just avoid the conflict entirely, good luck. Because by 2026, 87% of connected devices globally will use components sourced from either U.S. or Chinese supply chains. So if you're using a screen, you're in it, whether you like it or not. China didn't just say goodbye to ASML and TSMC, it slammed the door and locked it from the inside. And while Western firms scramble to uncouple, Beijing isn't backing off. It's doubling down. What started as a sanction response has become a blueprint for independence. For some, it's survival. For China, it's sovereignty. But here's the twist. The war might not stay on silicon. Because quietly, under the surface, Beijing has begun a slow-motion move that could destabilize everything offloading U.S. tech-linked assets and sovereign bond holdings in strategic batches. The chip war was Act 1. Act 2? It might hit Wall Street. And the fallout won't just be tech stocks. It might be retirement funds, mortgage rates, and the next recession. So, ask yourself, what happens when this stops being about chips and starts being about capital? Stick around. That storm is already forming. We're glad you're enjoying this video. Please like and subscribe. Check out another video that is now on your screen.